Welcome to the TSL Podcast. I'm Steve Maeda, and today we are talking about something that's requested tons of times when people meet me face-to-face, and then we also have podcasts on it, but more people should be talking about it, and that is STDs, STIs, all the things that you get from sex that are diseases, that are social stigmas, and they mess with you. In fact, it's an interesting thing because what we actually want to cover here is the real story of like what happens when you get STDs, when you contract them, how you bring them up during sex, uh, how you deal with them, how to prevent passing them on, and how to deal with it when somebody tells you they have an STD and so on. But the stigma about them is ridiculous. And I know we have a lot about it, but let's let's get on the real here. Or there's a lot of people who talk about that and they like blame the, I don't know, like, oh, in our culture, da, da, da. But let's be real. So first off, I made a podcast about this a while ago. And it got like 35 views. Nobody watched it. But one of the comments quite recently was like, what STDs do you have? And I was like, what an asshole thing. But let's actually bring this up because I don't care. I'm not ashamed of anything. I'm very proud of my life. And this is what we should be talking about. So the first person I had sex with, she got kidnapped. She got raped. And it was a really brutal fucked up experience. And she got a ton of STDs. I got them. So with only having sex about five times in my life, I got herpes. I got monohepatitis. I got uh, a bunch of shit, man, all, all sorts of crazy stuff, but most could be solved with either time passing penicillin, all that sort of stuff, but not herpes. And I felt that I was cursed. You know, I was 18 years old. I'd only had sex a few times. I felt weird about it. It was an awkward situation to begin with because whenever we're having sex when we're 18, we're a little bit off. And because it was so traumatic for other reasons, um, just because, I mean, it was a very brutal experience for her. I saw the kidnapping happen. It was screwed up. Anyway, I didn't have sex with anybody for three years. And when I brought it up to my first girlfriend, it took me 20 minutes to explain to her or to my next girlfriend, I'm sorry, getting all mixed up here. It took me like 20 minutes to explain to her like, oh man, and this happened and it's weird, but I'm still a good person, but, but, uh, but I, I, I have herpes and you know what? She had sex with me and then we broke up. I meet another girl. I bring it up to her same 20 minute dialogue. And guess what? She has sex with me. And then I bring it up to my next girlfriend who was actually a virgin and she had sex with me. And then there was a coworker that I had and I bring, and this is like over the span of like six years, guys, I, I bring it up to a girl that I work with. Who's kind of like putting the moves on me and I just slip it out right before I slip it in just to have a good moral standing because I want to be a good guy. And she has sex with me. And so at this point it kind of clicks in my head. You know what? There's this girl that applied at my job and I kind of like, she's kind of cool. She's a cool chick. And I'm just going to bring it up. And I very awkwardly said, hey, um, you know, I mean, we just met and all this sort of stuff. And you're really cool. I just want to be straight up. And I don't even know what this means because like we just I mean, we literally knew each other for like two hours. And I said, I have herpes. My girlfriend got raped when I was 18. It's fucked up. And she said, why are you bringing this up? That's totally weird. And guess what she did that night? She had sex with me and I went, oh, my God. Holy shit this is not a big deal. And so I just started bringing it up right away and it almost catapulted people having sex with me that much quicker. It was a weird, weird thing. And let me just tell you about the different responses I've gotten. I'm not telling you this as a technique. You can see it that way. I don't care, but I'm telling you this because part of the shame we have and the confusion about STDs is that we think it makes it impossible. We're going to be judged and all sorts of different things. And that's not true. People behind your back, they might gossip about you. They might judge you. She may have told her friends, I'm not going to fuck this guy because he has herpes or whatever the fuck it is. But the fact of the matter is, is she does continue in a relationship. And they can also say no. But at this point, you know, 23, two years later from that point of me contracting this disease, I've now had sex with hundreds of women and brought it up to pretty much all of them. And they still had sex with me. And here's some of the things that you might get when you bring it up. All right. Is number one, they might ask some questions. Number two, they might judge you. Number three, they might not care, just brush it off. Number four, they might thank you. But in all of those things, that's very different from the actual choice they make of having sex with you. And this is very important 
This is important because one, you could go like, oh my God, well, Steve brought this up and they still had sex with him. Cool. No. The reason why I'm, I'm saying this primarily is so that you know that when you bring this up to somebody and they give you some feedback on it, that is not the same mind they're going to have when they sleep with you. So if you do want to be responsible or irresponsible or whatever, and I'd side on being responsible with it, then you can handle it in the bedroom to make sure it's something that they really want to do. Because I'll tell you this, when it gets hot and heavy, we're not thinking logically. I can't tell you how many times that I've said this to a girl and then two hours later, we're about to fuck and she doesn't care about wearing a condom. And hey, that can be fine. You know, you can make that, those choices. But is it something that's there? And to be honest, here's the aftermath of this whole thing. Let's say I bring this up two hours later, we have sex, we don't use a condom. They're never worried about it. They never think they made a bad choice. They just want to go, okay, am I safe? Am I, is it possible that I can get this or not? Or what are the, you know, whatever. They just, that's, that's what they really, in my opinion, need to know. But you need to be able to think about this. There's the response you're going to get when you tell somebody. And there's the actual reality of when you guys are having sex, which is most likely not going to be caring about those things. And I bring this up with my friends who have HIV. I bring this up with my friends who have hepatitis C. And as somebody so fashionably wrote on another YouTube video, hepatitis C is not an STD. Totally true, but stigmatized. And there's plenty of guys I know out there who have hep C that are afraid to bring it up because nobody fucking knows about what it is. And it's a really, it's a really brutal disease, man. It's really, really crazy. And there's cures for it now and all sorts of different stuff, but, uh, but they're expensive. But the thing is, is that we need to learn how to be honest with ourselves because we should be proud of ourselves. Now, let me also bring something else up. This happened earlier in the week. So this, again, this happens a lot, but my client was like, man, I always use condoms and I had sex with this girl and we didn't have a condom and it felt really, really good. And I don't want to use condoms anymore. I was like, well, look, this is a choice you got to make, but here's the reality of it. And let's get more into my history. I've had two STDs that I know about. Actually, let's bring it up to three because there's another one. It's kind of an interesting story. So number one, first person I have sex with, I get herpes and a bunch of stuff. So I guess I've had more, but, but that, that was one event where I got a bunch of stuff. So that was one event. And one of them has stuck with me till now. And the second time was right when I got involved in pickup. One of the first girls that I hooked up with. In fact, it, there's a lot I could say about this relationship because it changed actually my methodology of how I did things. But this was in like 2006. It was that early on. And she gave me chlamydia. All right. And I you know, noticed it right away. I tried to will it away. And I was like, no, I can't believe I have this. There's burning when I pee and there's pus and it sucks. And oh my God, it, like I can outthink this. I can pee more. I can drink a bunch of, you know, whatever pineapple juice or dip my dick in rubbing alcohol. Never, never do that. Um, and <laughs> basically I can will this away. And then finally I went and got a pill an antibiotic and it killed it. And then the third one was I was with my girlfriend and she had a yeast infection and I got it. And Jesus, I would never wish that upon anybody. And it's the same thing whenever you get some sort of STD. It's private. It's weird. Nobody talks about it. Even then, I remember I was like, oh, my God, I don't want to go to a doctor for this. And I was actually on a road trip. It was horrible when I got the yeast infection. And they said, well, you can't take, you know, uh, something for a vaginal yeast infection for your yeast infection. It's not going to work. That's what I did. And it did work. But. God, horrible, horrible hell. And there's so much denial that comes with it. And, and guys need to talk about that because you don't need to have that denial. But see, then there's this other thing with my buddy who was asking me, he's like, you know, well, I had sex without a condom. And I said, look, dude, dude, I've gotten those three experiences where I've gotten STDs and I've had sex with a lot of people and not worn condoms. The reason why you wear a condom is for protection of STDs and to not have pregnancies that you want and maybe some other reasons why you might have them. There's all sorts of benefits to condoms and we should talk about that on a separate pod, podcast and how to use them and how to use them so they feel good. The biggest tip, and some people argue with me on this, but man, it's a lifesaver, is get a little Astroglide and put a bead, a bead inside the condom. People say not to do that. Do it, it's awesome. You know where I learned that from? One of Heidi Fleiss's former call girls. It's awesome. And if those girls are getting dudes to pay 5,000 bucks 
for a hand job, you should listen to their sex techniques. In any case, that all being said, like the, the, the thing is what I was telling this guy is that tons of people have STDs. Obviously a lot of people have things like herpes or have had an STD huge amounts. I don't know the percentage, but tons of people, tons of sexually active people have them. You know, things like HPV, you know, apparently everybody's a carrier or 70% of sexually active people are, um, all these different things. So obviously people get them, but man, for the amount of sex we have and how random it was, I mean, the first time I had sex, I, or the first, the first, within the first five times of me having sex, I got an STD that has stuck with me for 22 years. That is rare. All right. Now, also me passing on that STD, there's only one person that I know of, and I know the exact time it happened. It was totally stupid and irresponsible of me. Terrible. Now, I could have passed it on more times, but I've had sex with hundreds of people since then. All right. So I know that when I have an outbreak of herpes, I don't have sex with anybody. I tell them about it. And the crazy thing about that is, is I tell them about it and still people will have sex with me. Still people will want to. They'll say, well, can't we, you know, I don't care. I'll do it anyway. Or, you know, it's only contagious. I looked it up. It's only contagious when, you know, the, you have the, an open sore and right now it's sealed or you can wear a condom and all this sort of stuff, all this sort of shit. It's crazy how much people will still have sex with you because, and it's not because people are stupid. It's because the brain is different. Now, Here's another thing that comes into STDs. Like my buddy, my client, who I was like, dude, you're actually better off just having an STD at this point because you worry about it so goddamn much. You think about it like it's the plague that if you get it, that somehow you're destroyed as a man for the rest of your life and you're tarnished. Dude, it's not that fucking big of a deal. It is not. You making it a big deal pisses me off because it makes me think like, wow, what do you think about me? Because it's not a fucking big deal. And I used to think it was a big deal. It's not at all. You've been sick before, you've gotten maybe herpes on your mouth, you've made out with somebody and gotten the flu, you've, you've been in an area where people influence you, they're supposed to influence you. You know, and, it, and it's terrible, right? You know, you don't, well, I'm not saying that you should get herpes, that you should get mono, that you should get uh, syphilis, I'm not saying that you should get any of these things, but what I'm saying is, is that if you fear it so much, you fuck it up. And let's think about this. Like we are bringing this up on a separate, you know, uh, thread and earlier on the call, uh, like two hours ago or something, but we were talking about a tool. You know, there's this guy on our calls, Terrence, who comes on all the time. And in 2009, that's how long we've been doing this. He said, and I remember on the podcast, he holds up a knife. I'm going to find the footage of this because it's with me, Chris Pacheco and him. And he's like, there's a knife. A knife is a tool. And obviously you could use it to kill somebody, you can use it to cut bread, you can use it to butter bread, you can use it to pry something open, you can use it with camping, all this sort of stuff. But if you fear it all the time, you're going to turn it into what you fear it as. And if you fear sex or diseases that come through and there's a healthy fear, you know, you shouldn't get them. But if you go, oh my God, if I get them, then I'm just affected for life. I'm, I'm, you know, horrible. Man, it's not that big of a deal. Jeez, you cannot live in fear. You know, if me walking down the street is afraid of breathing in certain air that might get me sick, that might lay me out for a week, I am living in a reality which is totally fucked. It is changing my experience from working in the natural world around me of people interacting and limiting me. I am now changing my expression of a person by denying my immediate environment. And you might go, yeah, but... but but Steve, it's much different fucking people. No, look, if you're sexually active, these things are going to happen. You're going to be influenced emotionally, physically, mentally, your lifestyle. These things are going to happen. It's like we hear so much with the, the men's rights faction of things, which, hey, men need rights. We need to be talking about this. But men need to not feel ashamed move into like these conceptual ideologies and get angry about stuff. You should be out there living life and changing things directly in front of you. Right. But the thing is, is that we hear these things of like, Oh my God, I have to pay child support. Oh my God. I, I might fall in love and get my heart broken. And we live in this fear-based mentality of how 
we are going to express ourselves, that's a terrible idea. Look, you're going to fall in love. And you should, you should have some information about it. People can be vapid, asshole, fucked up motherfuckers. Hell hath no fury like a woman scorned, right? That shit is going to happen when you fall in love. You're going to, it, maybe you get married. Maybe you have kids. Maybe you get divorced. See, we as men need to go, we're not so weak that that harms us from staying out of life. That we need to know that we can be strong enough and that we need to have stories of other men who've gone through it and get run through the ringer. But when we start going like, oh my God, if we have to prevent that. I'm not going to date people. I'm going to put them through a psychological screening and not allow myself to feel the emotions, to fall in love, to be responsible, to be accountable for myself, to be who I am around other people. And when I see people talk about that with STDs, it's like, wow, so you're not letting yourself feel something with somebody, you get caught up in the heat of the moment, all these different things. And kind of like what I said, like women and men can be stupid about this. It's like, hey, I have an STD. It's like, oh my God, that should be, let's fuck. And you guys have sex and you have unprotected sex, but these are human beings. That's the beautiful thing. Like the women that made that decision weren't again being stupid. They were in touch with their feelings and their emotions and they had all the awareness. I mean, women get plenty of awareness about sex and we need to be aware of the actual timeline of how these things happen, but meaning that we need to be aware that their decision-making process is going to be much different than what they might've thought when we told them on our date than in the bedroom. But we need to start not start, start expressing ourselves in sharing who we are rather than fearing it all the goddamn time and thinking we're going to come up with a solution from it. That's really, really terrible. Look, I'll just tell you right now, like, you know, in all of this preventative measures for STDs, they're out there. If you have something like HPV, talk to people about it. It could be on areas that aren't protected. Same with herpes. I got herpes. I was wearing a condom when I had sex with my girlfriend, when I got it. All right. And, um, you know, it, it, there's certain areas that aren't protected. You know, there's learn about how it works, how it can be passed on and how to limit those things. But at some point, you're not going to care so much. It's not going to shape your relationship. And to be honest, it should never shape your relationship. What it should only shape is the specific moment that it affects, which is that decision point when you're going to have sex with each other and when you're not. And that is it. See, we make our problems much bigger than they are rather than specifically what they are. If I have a problem with the skin of my dick, then that's only a problem of when the skin on my dick touches a part where it can affect somebody and affect their decision making. And that's it. And once that decision and choice is made, whether it's made with their body in the heat of the moment or with a logical decision and they're two very, 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 very different things, that's all that matters. And after that, our relationship is shaped. Do not take your shame into your identity, your bedroom, and who you are. In any case, we've been talking about this for a long time. We've been talking about it a lot on this call in particular. And we'll talk about it some more. And what was sad about this is somebody emailed me about it and I only had three videos on it. We talk about this a lot. Look, we talk about it a lot on our Facebook groups and so on. And there was a guy who actually had herpes and we were like, man, just bring it up. And he's like, but I don't know. Any, da, 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 da. And he brought it up and the girl fucked him. And she was actually thanking him for being honest. And then he broke up with her and he brought it up to another person and she had sex with him. It's a lot easier than you think. We think there's a big stigma that's going to come with it. And I'll tell you this, if somebody judges you for it, that doesn't mean they're not going to fuck you. And so what? What is there? Man, have some goddamn pride in yourself. Don't walk into a situation with shame because if you walk into a situation with shame, even if it's the right thing, most likely they'll reject you because they sense your shame. In any case, thanks for watching. Subscribe to all this stuff. I put up all these like suggested videos and so on. We have 800 videos on this channel. On the other Steve Maeda channel, which there will be an icon popping up for it, we have like 30 videos on that. There's a bunch of shit we produce. Be a part of it. And most importantly, if you want to get involved beyond just subscribing and all that sort of good stuff, join MD Excellence. If you want to step it up from there, join TSL Online. But we're a men's group. We talk. We interact. 
And the sad part is, is there's not a lot of people doing this out here. There's a lot of talking heads. There's a lot of broadcast, but there's not a group like ours on a Wednesday night where we're going to be on this call five, six hours where we're all talking and all interacting and coming up with some good stuff. So the journey of being a great man is going to last you a lifetime, but what matters most is what you do today. All right, later.